All right, so you got this waterfront home, you know, you got this perfect boat, you're out there, and where do you go now? Let me tell you seven places that I think are really cool places to go and see on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. All right, what's up everybody? This is Rob Scow here with EXP Realty in Maryland. If you're someone looking for a waterfront home, make sure you call me, text me, and I'd be happy to help you make that decision and make an informed decision about finding that waterfront home. You can also scroll down to the first comment, click on the link, schedule a Zoom meeting where we can talk one-on-one -on -one about your home buying needs. And the last thing I want you to do, please do this. Click the subscribe button, click the bell so you're notified every single time we put out new content about the Chesapeake Bay, about living on the water, about enjoying the water. All right, so like I said, I wanted to give you some ideas of places to go once you're kind of down here, or maybe you're kind of looking to decide if you want to be on the water down here. Seven places that I think are super awesome to go and see by boat, um, you know, in the Chesapeake Bay. All right, so the very first one is a pretty popular destination. I've been there a few times myself, never by you know boat. I've been on boats in it, but St. Michael's. St. Michael's is just a cool little town on the Eastern shore. And it's not really, you know, it's, it's little compared to other places like Annapolis and places like that, but there is tons of stuff to do in St. Michael's. My recommendation is you go down there, it's on the Eastern shore of Maryland. You go, you stay in an Airbnb, you stay in a bed and breakfast, Park the car and leave it for the day. Go around, walk around to the different areas, go to the shops, go to the restaurants, and just go enjoy this little quaint town. There is so much to do in such a small area that I promise, at least for a long weekend, you're not going to run out of stuff to do. All right, so the second stop I would say to go and check out is another town. It's Solomon's, Maryland. Now, specifically, I'm talking about Solomon's Island. Now, what you would do is you would come over from Solomon's, which is on the southern side of Calvert County. You would come into, you know, Bat Creek and park your boat at those docks that are by the restaurants there because the ones that are on the Patuxent don't have the best parking for boats and just go and enjoy and walk. Now, Solomon's is a little bit different than St. Michael's. There's less shops for you to shop in, but there's tons of restaurants. Solomon's is known for every year having the Tiki Bar opening, which is around the third week in April. People come from miles around to go and do this. But besides that Tiki Bar, there's different restaurants where you can go and enjoy um, you know, and just walk around and take in the scenery. The Patuxent River in that area is beautiful. And if you drove your boat over there and you're staying at an Airbnb or maybe you're staying at a bed and breakfast, then it's a hop, skip and a jump or an Uber ride or, you know, a rental car away from different really cool areas around Southern Maryland as well. So I highly recommend Solomon's being one of those places you can go. All right, so number three is not a town. Number three is a really cool place on the Potomac River in Maryland. Um, fun fact, Maryland owns the whole, whole Potomac River up until the Virginia shoreline. So anywhere in the Potomac technically is Maryland, unless you're on the Virginia shore. But as soon as you've put your foot in the water, you're in Maryland. Um, but the place I'm talking about right now is called Shark's Tooth Island. Um, and it's kind of middle Potomac on the Virginia side. And it's a strip of beach that fossilized shark's teeth wash up from. So behind Shark's Tooth Island, there are a bunch of cliffs and the currents actually take those shark's teeth out of the cliffs, those fossilized shark's teeth, and wash them up on this beach. Now, if you're a, shark's, a shark tooth um, you know, enthusiast, it's a great place to go. And I highly recommend going and seeing it on the weekdays when there's not a bunch of people there. If you go after a strong wind or a high tide where it kind of eroded those cliffs a little bit, you can stand a good chance to really see a lot of shark's teeth in there. Um, sometimes they're in the tide line at the top of the sand. Other times you can wade a little bit up to your ankles and find them. I've seen people use different tools and different techniques to find them. So just figure out what works for you and you can find some really cool teeth there in a short amount of time too. Now I said weekdays are best for that kind of activity because on the weekends it can definitely turn into, I want to say a party island, but there's a ton of boats there with a ton of people anchored up, enjoying the music, enjoying you know each other's company and stuff like that. So if you're there just to look for shark's teeth, you might want to go when it's a little less busy. But if you're there to kind of, you know, enjoy people's company, have a good time and find shark's teeth, that weekend is definitely an awesome time to go. Now, I will say, you know, there is a membership to join there. I'll put the link down in the uh, comments. 
just so if you are linked down in the description, just so if you do want to go to Sharks Tooth Island, you know how to find that annual pass. I think it's about $150 to $175 for that annual pass to be part of that Sharks Tooth you know, Island group. Um, and it goes to help maintain the beach and things like that. So super important that we support those people that have made that private property open to the public. Right, so the next place that I'm going to say that you should go visit by boat in the Chesapeake Bay is Smith Island. If you haven't heard of Smith Island, it is a really crazy island um, that's 14 miles from the nearest mainland in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay. It's 14 miles from, I believe, Chrisfield and about 14 to 20 miles from Point Lookout. It really is in there in the middle of the bay all by itself. I've been there a few times. It's well known for its soft shell crab. It's well known for its Smith Island cake. And it's one of those experiences that if you're in Maryland, you have to try it. Now you could take your own boat. There's also ferries that run from Crisfield, And there are sometimes ferries that run from Southern Maryland, St. Mary's County area, or even Solomon's that are day cruises. But I highly recommend to go over there and get an Airbnb like we've talked about before and take your own boat over there and go across the bay, see the scenery and all that kind of stuff on your way over and just taking this really unique Maryland Waterman Island town. All right, so the next one, this is the shout out to all, like the birders and the naturalists and all that kind of stuff. If you're into that kind of stuff, one of my favorite places just to go and get lost for the day is the Honga River. Now the Honga River is literally directly across from the Patuxent River and it's got miles upon miles of unspoiled marsh. So if you just want to go fishing, see wildlife, uh, you know, go up into cuts and guts of different little areas and creeks, man, get a shallow water boat, scoot across the bay, across the Potomac or Patuxent River and scoot across into the Honga and just get lost. What a lot of people will do is they'll drive over to the Eastern Shore and put their kayaks in and kayak around that area because it is a protected river. And man, you just see so much wildlife. I've been back in the Honga and seen ospreys, eagles, blue herons, white herons, like white egrets and all that kind of stuff. Dolphins, different types of fish. You know, it just is a cornucopia of different wildlife back there. So 100% recommend that if you're into wildlife, the Honga River needs to be on the top of your list to see. So number six and number seven are kind of, uh, you know, stepping away from these smaller or kind of intimate attractions. And the first one is Washington, D.C. You know, a lot of people don't think about it, but you can get to Washington, D.C. by being on the Potomac River. Going up to Washington, D.C. and going up to the Potomac is just really neat for many reasons. You know, the sights and the sounds that you see when you get up there, the amount of different, you know, monuments and historic figures you see as you go get closer. But then also just the people watching and the boats that are around there, the yachts and all that kind of stuff. It is an experience. So I highly recommend doing that at least once and getting that experience in. And my last one that I would say, and it's kind of a hike from where I am, you know, if I were to launch at the Patuxent River, it would take me about an hour and a half to get there. It would be Annapolis. And Annapolis is one of those places you got to do at least once. You got to get down there. Again, make it a trip, book an Airbnb, book a hotel, park in Ego Alley, park your boat there, and just go walk around downtown Annapolis. There's tons of restaurants, tons of shops, bars, all that kind of stuff, and everything else that you can't reach by foot. There are Ubers and you know Lyfts and all that kind of stuff everywhere. You can get anywhere you want around Annapolis. All right, so hopefully these seven ideas of places to go see on the water on the Chesapeake Bay are helpful. If you have any questions or need any help, make sure you use that contact information below. Also scroll down, click on that first link and it will schedule a Zoom meeting one-on-one -on -one with me where we can talk about your waterfront needs. And last but not least, if you haven't yet, make sure you click the subscribe button, click the little bell so you're notified every single time we put out new content. Hope to see you on the next video.